Everyone, please stand as we sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
was just waiting and drawing that out as long as I could. Youth led service, and we have a guest speaker to follow. Uh, for anyone that does not know me, my name is Clint Williams, along with my wife Chelsea. We have the privilege of serving with Ryan and Hannah as youth leaders in this church. One of our missions and goals in this youth program is to make disciples who reach out to people in need, all while providing the proper setting and education to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. This church plays a vital role in this. It provides the means and resources for us to successfully go forth with the missions ahead. But in today's cultures, words like disciples and missions are becoming less important and less used. But I am thankful to stand here today and say that is not the attitude of our youth. A couple weeks ago, we actually did a survey. We asked the youth what are some things they would like to see, and uh, the answer surprised us. They wanted more hands-on learning activities. They wanted learning guides to follow along with our lessons. And then we gave them a couple of options of what we were looking forward to for travel this year, and the majority of the room wanted to go on another mission trip. Here later on this service, you actually hear testimonies from the trip, our mission trip we took to New Orleans to help in the church plant down there. But as we are seeing a common goal and a common shift in the youth department here, to be oriented more in mission work, it still begs the question to us and everyone here is what is our mission, what is your mission, what are your goals, and what are our goals? And the follow-up to that would be, are they in service to the kingdom, or are they in service to the world? As humans, we can set a multitude of goals, uh, personal, spiritual, finance, etc. But the great thing is that God can use you and us in any circumstance, no matter where you work or what activities you are involved in. If you are setting goals in service to him and his kingdom, he will use you to further his service and his kingdom. If you set personal worldly goals, you will never grow to your full potential in Christ and grow where you can be effective for him and the purpose that he truly has for your life. We see in scripture several men who made the mission of Christ their top priority. We read about John, Peter, and Paul who all went through trials and sufferings but never gave up on their goal and the mission that God had laid on their lives. We read one story in particular in Thessalonians, where Paul worked the fields day and night to earn his keep just so he could spread the gospel and minister to that church in that local area. That told me one thing when I read that, that Paul's mission was clear to him. He knew what he could do to serve the kingdom. He knew how he could be effective. He knew how he set a goal, and he made it a priority in his life in his case, was to be a minister and to gospel. And then he accommodated that mission to his life, whether that was by working to support himself so he could minister to that local church or traveling to another area where the gospel was lacking or allowing a church to support him financially so he could focus solely on the task ahead. That's how he did it, but my question is still, what is our mission, what is your mission? Are you seeking God through his word and prayer to search for guidance where you can effectively serve his greater purpose? We see what should be a common goal for every Christian through scriptures like these. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. This is good and it pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some understand delay, but is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. And then we have Romans chapter 10, verses 14 through 15. But how can they call on him who they have not believed in? How can they believe without hearing about him? How can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach unless they are sent? For as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who announce the gospel of good things. If we can reach people here and also afar to let them know that even though we are unworthy, we are broken, we are sinners from the very beginning, but there is this thing out there called God's grace and it was delivered by the blood of Christ, for us to have the opportunity to come to salvation for eternal life in Christ by admitting we need saving, admitting we need a Savior, repent, turn from our natural ways, and trust in Him for all things. But however will we accomplish this if we don't have any servants in the church? So I ask that you think and pray and discover what your mission is. How can you serve the kingdom in some way to bring verses like 1 Timothy 
and 2 Peter to life where we truly have a true desire and a common goal to bring everyone to the truth in some way, form, or fashion. If there should be any people leading the charge to bring back disciples, to bring back missionaries, leading and setting an example for the upcoming generation, it should be us. But sometimes we focus on this world, here and now. We focus and we come back to our own nature, the very nature that Christ delivered us from the second we came to salvation and trusted in him. And even though our old nature will be with us until the end, and we will struggle and we will have internal conflicts at times, and we will fall and we will fail and we will still sin, all while hopefully gathering strength and discipline while we grow in our own individual personal walks with Christ. But the glory of it all is when we do mess up and we do sin and when we do constantly fall short of the glory of God, grace steps in. We ask and we can be and will be forgiven. We can continue our walk with Christ all while knowing what Romans 8 tells us. For I am persuaded that not even death nor life nor angels nor rulers, things present, things to come, hostile powers, height or depth, or any other created thing will have the power to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. For this you know if you are saved. If you know Christ, you know this to be true, that we have forgiveness, that we have an eternal reward, that we cannot be separated from Christ, that we have this amazing, undeserving, wonderful, absolute truth. There could be somebody in this place today that doesn't know this truth, but is here looking for it. Or we could have a hundred plus people in here that know this to be true. And I rejoice in them, but I also rejoice in the people that come here to find it. And I pray that they do. But if I brought a map up and placed a waypoint on this church, put a 10 mile circle around it, I would bet that I would find a hundred plus people that don't know the truth, that are not coming here or searching for it. And then if I travel to a bigger area, more populated, I bet I would increase that number tenfold. For that, that we as saved people know to be true should be the very reason that we dictate our lives to serve his purpose, his kingdom. And our first goal should be to discover what his mission is for our own individual lives. Discover how he wired you. What are you effective in? And use it for him. And when we discover that vision, that mission for our lives, we make it a goal. And we accommodate our lives to it. We accommodate our lives to fit that goal that we have just discovered. So either we add it into our everyday lives or we change direction completely. But through prayer and scriptures, we find out how we can effectively serve him in our everyday life, whether in job, attitude, activity, all in service him with a common goal of reaching the people that do not know this wonderful truth that we know in some way, form, or fashion. In closing, as First Baptist Church youth try to make this our goal, to reach out to people, whether by mission work, education, or evangelism. I thank you for allowing me to speak on this, and I thank you for all your support. I thank you for all the support you give the youth, and I ask you to continue it. And I now have the pleasure of turning the service over to Mr. Joseph. Those of you who don't know my, me, my name is Joseph Mullenix, and I would like to welcome everyone to First Baptist Church for this youth-led service. If you are a visitor with us, please check the back of the pew in front of you for a pamphlet like this one, and please fill it out so we can have a record of your attendance. If you are watching from Facebook or from any other services and you would like to have a ride to church, please call the church office at 931-359-4077. And we will gladly come and pick you up. I would now like to introduce to you the youth that are participating in this service. Walker Whaley. <laughs> Bryson Whaley. Chandler Burrow. Courtney Burrow. Nisa Arrieta. Angel Arrieta. Naomi Hopper, Madison Herring, 
Alison Herring, Gracie Steely, Coco Allen, Annabelle Molinix, Isabella Robinson, Ellie Carter, Easton McMahon, Leslie Bishop, Haley Bishop, Tracy Eddy, William Juan, Juan, Mitchell Ford, Dale Mills, and Samantha Hopkins. Now would you please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you have blessed us with today and for allowing us to gather here in this building. We ask you to bless everyone in this service and hope that you will touch the hearts of someone in here today. We ask, us, ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now would you please stand and greet one another. One another.
here, and she's going to be performing Endless Hallelujah. miracles of life around us point like arrows to your name let our voices rise all creation cries singing out in endless hallelujah from this moment on join with heaven's song sing I hope your Sunday morning has gotten off to a wonderful start. Okay, so today we are going to be reading from Jeremiah 1, 7, verse 7 through 8. And uh, if you want to follow along with us, it'll be 632 in your pew Bible. All right. So then the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a youth. For you will go to everyone I send you to and speak whatever I tell you. Do not be afraid of anyone, for I will be with you to deliver you. This is the Lord's declaration. Okay, as many of you can see, we have some dominoes set up here. And how the dominoes work is if you hit one, they all fall. This is what Han Hannah just read the verse that demonstrates the domino effect. Once you spread the Lord's word, the Christian faith is all around us. And just because you're young doesn't mean you spreading his word is less important than people older than you. So can I get a volunteer to knock down the dominoes? You want to do it? Okay, you hit the first one, and they're all just watch them fall, okay? So that's how when you spread Jesus' word, that's how the Christian faith spreads around us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to teach these children your word. May they take it upon their hearts to use it to be a better example to you and their community. Let your word impact them in a way to spread it like the domino effect. 
And all God's people say amen. When I was really little, I can remember going to church every Sunday with my grandmothers. I've always been in a church ever since I was, like, this tall. A couple years ago, I hit a really rough patch in my life where I felt like my world was crashing around me. In that moment, I remember asking God, why me? After all the mess cleared up, I found myself, going, <laughs> found myself getting closer to God. I was going to church again. I always wanted to do a mission trip, and when I found out about our youth take, uh, taking a trip, I was ecstatic. During July, the youth of First Baptist Church took a trip to New Orleans to help out with the music camp in Bell Chase to help spread the word to children. We used music and instruments to help spread the word about Jesus to the kids. While at the hotel, every night we did a little devo devotionals and heard others' testimonies. The one testimony that stuck with me was the one given by our youth leader, Hannah Davis. She spoke of how, how God helped her through a really tough time and brought her closer to him. However, the one thing I will always remember is giving the food out to the tent city people. We had 40 bags of food made up to give to them, and we were only going to make 30, but we had, an ex we had extra left over, and we made 40, and that was the exact number we needed. God told Courtney Burrow, Angel Urbieta, and everyone else who was preparing the bags to make 10 more so we could feed everyone. That was the most touching and moving thing I have ever experienced. God knew, God knew what we needed and made sure we had it. New Orleans was a trip I will never forget. All of you is more than enough for all of me, for every thirst and every need. You satisfy me with your love, and all I have in you is more than enough. my supply my breath of life and still more awesome than i know you are my reward worth living for and still more awesome than i know and all of you is more than enough for all of me for every thirst and every need you satisfy me with your love and all i have in you is more than enough Still more awesome than I know. You're the coming king. You are everything. Still more awesome than I know. And all of you is more than enough for all of me. For every thirst and every need. You satisfy me with your love and all I have in you. More than 
all I want, more than all I need. You are more than enough for me, more than all I know, more than all I can say. You are more than enough. All of you all of is more than, than enough. More for than all, all I of need. Me. You Holy are more than enough for me. me. More, more than, than all I know. Want, more than all I can say. You are more than enough. All of And every need you satisfy me with your love and all I have in you and all I have in you and all I have in you is more than enough to speak about our youth group. Before I get started, let me take a minute to thank Brother Tom, our youth leaders, our church family, and our parents for supporting our youth group in everything that we do. Our youth group meets on Sunday and Wednesday nights. At each meet, we begin with fellowship, and then we start off with a prayer. After this, we have our lesson, and then to conclude, we ask for prayer requests, and then we pray. First Baptist Youth Group has participated in many different outreach opportunities. Some of which I have been involved in are building a wheelchair ramp for a person in need, collecting items for Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, helping people in need because of hurricanes, helping family move furniture, supplying Christmas for children, and two of the most recent were our summer mission trip and goat festival. As you can see, our youth leaders keep us very busy in serving others. We have witnessed many of our youths confess their faith in Christ this year. With that being said, I would like to ask for your prayers for each one of us for the challenges that we face on a daily basis. Thank you. Good morning. As many of you know, my name is Naomi Hopper, and I will be doing this morning's scripture reading. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 13, verses 47 through 52. That's on page 939 in your pew Bible. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have appointed you as a light for the Gentiles to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they rejoiced and glorified the message of the Lord. And all who had been appointed to eternal life believed. So the message of the Lord spread through the whole region. But the Jews incited the religious women of high standing and leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and the Barnabas and expelled them from their district. But shaking the dust off their feet against them, they proceeded to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. And now we have come to the time in our worship service where we ask to give a small portion of what has graciously been given to us. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us here today and thank you for bringing these people here to worship this morning. We ask if you would bless this offering and I ask that you would give us an open heart and an open mind and that we use this offering to better our church and your kingdom. We ask all of this in your name of the only Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh 
Good morning. Last summer, our youth group took a mission trip to New Orleans in order to help Doug May set up a Christian music camp for kids in the area. The night we arrived in New Orleans, we met up with the other camp leaders to discuss what each of us would be doing throughout the week. Some kids were asked to work in the kitchen. Others would be asked to carry small groups of children from class to class. I, on the other hand, was asked to help Evan Dumser with teaching uh, kids how to play the drums. We were told that we would be teaching two groups of kids how to play two different songs throughout the week. So I woke up the next morning excited to teach these kids how to play the drums. The problem is I forgot how loud drums are. <laughs> so I met many different kids on this trip that, I'd, that I would see make complete 180s, but because I don't have much time, I'm only going to be able to tell you one story. So on the first day of camp, there was a kid who stood out to me because we're pretty sure he never lifted his nose out of his phone for the entire time. We asked him to put his phone down, but he wouldn't budge. After this, we mostly just assumed that he'd be a problem child and went on uh, with the day, but we were wrong. The next morning, we got there expecting this child to be on his phone just like he had been the day before, but he wasn't. In fact, something must have changed overnight because this boy came in with the biggest smile and looked so happy while playing the drums, even to go as far as to continue playing them uh, while the other kids would be done with practice and begin doing things like playing basketball in Foursquare. After camp that night, I had a feeling on my heart, so I went up to Evan and told him um, after our group meeting that uh, I wanted to play a bigger part because many of these kids, they just, I wanted them to be able to have the same type of Sunday school lessons that I had growing up. So that night, we worked together, and we put together a few five-minute lessons, and we'd go in the next day, and then the next day um, was the first day I read some of these lessons from Scripture. Um, I'm not going to lie, I didn't expect much to change from just one verse, but that same boy from earlier, uh, after the scripture, after the scripture, Evan Dumser, um, he, he had began telling the kids about the performance the next day, and one of these kids uh, was a little girl who raised her hand and said that she had stage fright, and that she was really nervous about going up in front of people, and that, that little boy, the one from earlier in the week, the one who was glued to his phone and seemed to not give a care in the world, he looked at her and told her that God's got her back so she doesn't need to worry. And we, he would open up to us later that day. We learned that his brother had died and that he had struggled with that, but his brother had played drums, and that's what made him happy was the drums. So I just, I, this, the most reason of this is I just want you to know that every kid who was on that trip has a story of their own, uh, youth included. So there's just talk to any of them. They all have their own individual stories. Thank you. But uh, I'd like to start off with, there are not many things in life that are certain, but there's one thing that is, and that's eternity. And the question I want to ask you is, are you prepared? Earlier this week, there was a man in a store. The lady in front of him was, was attempting to set up an account and have her cable hooked up at her new home. The attendant who worked, worked for the cable company went down a list of things that were required before service could begin. The lady looked at the attendant and said, I'm sorry, I didn't come prepared because I didn't know I was coming. So I want you to consider this statement for a moment. I didn't come prepared because I didn't know I was coming. So I wonder how many people stepped out into eternity this week in the same situation. They didn't go prepared because they didn't know they were going. So it's, sadly, there, there are some people who died this week who, have, who had every intention of making things right with the Lord but they always said, one day. They knew the plan of salvation. They believed that Jesus was the only way to heaven. They thought that they would have a little more time to make things right. They had planned to surrender to him, but now it is too late. So chances are pretty good that someone here today has that same mindset. You know that you should turn to Jesus, but you procrastinate. You turn away and ignore the conviction 
of the Holy Spirit week after week. So who is it to say that your name won't be the next name in the obituaries? So we lived in a world filled with uncertainty. There are not many things that we can say is a 100% certain. But there are three things that I can promise you can take to the bank. Number one, you will die. We go great lengths to put that off as long as we can, but one day it is going to happen. Number two, you will face judgment. Saved or lost, you will stand before God at either the judgment seat of Christ or the, or the great white throne. And then number three, you will confess that Jesus is Lord. Some have already done this so in, this, in their life, but even the atheist one day will confess that Jesus is Lord. So as we look at these topics, I would like for you to answer the question, are you prepared for eternity? So let's begin with life and death. In scripture it says that it is anointed unto man once to die. So if you are alive in here today, say amen. I was beginning to wonder about some of you, but it, it's glad to hear that. So life is somewhat hard to sum up, but Richard Needham has characterized life into seven stages that he calls the seven, sta the seven ages of man. Spills, drills, thrills, bills, eels, Peels and wheels. So there's a, there's a common theme throughout the Old and New Testaments. Life is short and death is certain. So when you read the obituaries from the paper every day, you read from kids being one day old and people being a hundred years old. Everywhere in between. You are not exempt. You will die. Just like scripture said, as I read earlier, it is anointed unto man once to die. So I think that we all agree that life and death are certain. Everyone that alives, everyone that is alive fits into one of these two categories. You are either saved or lost. You are a believer or a non-believer. You are either a saint or or you are a sinner. So the judgment seat of Christ is where every believer will stand before Jesus, give an account of his service to him, receive our award, and unfortunately watch many potential awards burn up. This is also the, the place where you are hopefully hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. So although... All those who have never accepted Christ will be there on that day. All of the people that decided that they would rather live their life on their own terms are about to suffer the consequences and face justice. All of those who have procrastinated and put things off and died without surrendering to Jesus will be there. So-called good people will be there. Religious people will be there. Respected people will be there. Some of our families will be there. Some of our friends will be there. And some of you will be there. So we have seen who is present, but who will be absent. So the next part I like to talk about is heaven and hell. So Jesus promised his, believe, his followers a place of rest. Jesus is great because of who, of who is there and who is not. It is great because of what is there and also what is not there. We are told that there are no more sickness, pain, sorrow, crying, death. There will be, there will be no more funeral homes, nursing homes, hospitals, mental institutions prisons. 
no divorce, child abductions, accidents, taxes, no more bills. I thank Jesus for that one. No more cancer, diabetes, strokes, heart problems, arthritis, or any reason to even go to the doctor. Most importantly, there will be no more devil. So we will have a new home, a new life, a new body. It is a place of peace, joy, and fulfillment. We, are fam- we have family members and friends waiting for us. So most of all, one day we will finally be face to face with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you are saved today, then you can look forward to this place. But if you are lost, you will find yourself before Jesus. And I want you to get just a glimpse of what will happen. At the the great, great white throne, those who live their life being that there was no God will find out that there really is. They will find that it is too late to believe in him. There will be no excuses. There will be no second chances. There will be nowhere to hide. You will be summoned by God's courthouse. You will stand before the throne as he searches the book. You are waiting for him to smile and welcome you to heaven. You know that you were there. You know that you were a, a good person. You prayed the prayer, you believed, you served, you tithed, you taught, you sang, you brought others. He looks up from the book and says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. You beg and plead with him one more time because he is merciful and searches again. He looks up and you hear those words again. Depart from me. You cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You are still pleading. There must be a mistake. I am one of yours. You begin to feel the flames of the lake of fire at your feet. You are screaming. You are pleading. You know that this is the end. You are filled with regret. You are filled with horror that the torments of the fire are eternal. You spend eternity begging for one more chance. Over and over again, you hear sermons. You remember opportunities, but you you refuse to surrender to Jesus. So the most horrible fact of this is the lake of fire, and it is going to happen. The very one who is on this great right throne made a way for you to escape this torment but you refused to surrender. Hell is full of people who are going to get right one day. If you were to step out in eternity today, are you ready? Or would you have to say, I didn't come prepared because I didn't know I was coming? So I'm going to ask Brother Tom to come on forward, and I'm going I'm to say a prayer And then we'll have our invitation song. And I want y'all to think of that question that I just asked. Are you prepared for eternity? Do you know when you leave those doors today that you're going straight to heaven? Or do you not? Let us pray. Dear gracious, loving Heavenly Father, what an amazing service that you have put together. Dear Jesus, you have blessed us in more ways than we could ever imagine. But dear Jesus, we know that there is someone in here today. Someone in here that is afraid to take that step. But dear Jesus, just open their hearts and help them realize that that is the most important step that they'll ever make in their life. Dear Jesus, we love you, we praise you, and we want to honor and glorify your name more and more every day. In God's name I pray, amen. So if you'd all please stand and sing our uh, invitation song in Christ alone.